Merritt, we sit here just days after what was what feels like kind of an abrupt end to the season. Um, so much went on, obviously, in the past 10 months uh, over the course of a season. As you've kind of started to process it, what are your thoughts on, on the season that we just saw? Well, I'm doing this show way too early. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's, that's first and foremost the case. It's, it's surreal. Uh, it, it, it's surreal because I feel like we had one of our best seasons leading into this season. I think we, we, we had depth issues in 2016. Um, we, we addressed those, addressed those well. We had a squad that, that may well have been our strongest squad when healthy that, that we've ever had in MLS. And we had a path for us that was a very clear path, I think, you know, a clearer path in many ways than in 2015 to MLS Cup. So, you know, it's a tough one. Um, you know, to, to get through the regular season with all the injury adverse, adversity, manage that, you know, lose one of our, our two, three DPs for really the final third of the season, have our, uh, you know, highest profile defender gone for two thirds of the season, um, and win the West and basically get back to health uh, going into uh, the, 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 you know, the first, our first round of the playoffs, uh, and then experience what we experienced in Houston, you know, at, at, at best playing on a field that shouldn't have been sanctioned for an MLS game, for, you know, wasn't capable of playing, you know, a, a technically sound game on that field. And at worst, an unsafe field, you know, that's, that's, that's tough. And, and that wasn't the only issue. I mean, we should have had a, 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 a PK and, the, the issues why we didn't were bigger than some might think. So, you know, we had a lot of stuff going on there, and 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 you know, it's 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 unfortunate. Um, it, it really is unfortunate. Um, you know, to 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 lose Chara and Maviala and Nagby at that game, and 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 um, Guzman and uh, Blanco going into that game. I mean, you're just like, you know, what 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 what's going on and. You know, I, I think really Maddox and leg two in the first 11, 12 minutes is kind of the straw that, 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 that broke our back, and you can't, you can't make it up. Yeah. You know, it, 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 at some point, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. And you need some good fortune to win a cup. We had some in 2015, but I feel like we, we had an inordinate amount of bad fortune this year. And, you know, that's something people don't like to hear um, because it, 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 it seems to border on an excuse. I, I think, by and large, most people get that. Mm -hmm. who are objective and, 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 and look at the, uh, the facts of, of 2017, which had shaped up, you know, were to, to be a pretty incredible year for us. You know, it's, it's a tough one. Um, all the credit, I remember on our, our preseason show, I said Houston was going to be a better team okay. this year. You know, that was prescient. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, maybe too, too much so, but, but they're not a better team than us. Um, you know, better team doesn't always go through, but I think there's a pretty big gap between us and them. Um, you know, we should be gearing up for a battle with Seattle right now, which would be epic. We are going to have a lot of guys coming back for that series. Um, as it stands, Seattle's got a very easy path to MLS Cup, and that, that makes it a little bit harder. Difficult, I'm sure, already to look forward, but 2018, the Timbers, what needs to change? Well, look, uh, you know, anytime you don't have achieve your objectives you, you got to look yourself in the mirror and say say what can we do better um, it's probably a, a a bad example because I, I think there's actually we've got an intelligence fan base that understand mm -hmm. a lot of the dynamics around you know why we didn't necessarily look we won Cascadia Cup we won the West we won our division so we certainly did some things this year um, you're not always going to win a cup but um, you know, the, the tendency to just burn everything down, you know, exists. And, and you know, at a sort of a, a macro level, you look at what's going on with U.S. Soccer Federation right now. And I, obviously they had an unbelievable um, hardship in, in not qualifying. And, and, and there's some good reasons to want change. But, you know, there's sort of a just burn it all down mentality that exists so much so that, you've got candidates to run a federation, you know, who aren't even emotionally and mentally stable, you know, let alone have ever run an organization in your life. And you've got intelligent media, 
you know, not 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 pointing that out. And 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 that's the extreme version of 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 you know, let's just shout into the wind and 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 burn everything down and have change for change's sake. Now, again, are there good reasons for change? Yes, but but you know, what should those changes be? And let's do it in a smart way and understand what's really broken. Um, and what's not and fix what's broken. So on a much smaller level in our own backyard, you know, that's a process we go through every off season. Um, you know, even when we ultimately win MLS Cup, you can always get better. Uh, you can always improve. Uh, other teams are going to be improving. So we've got to go through systematically and that process has, has started position by position, um, player by player. Where can we get better? Um, uh, where can we make some changes? Uh, I've got a pretty good idea of, of, of some things that we're going to be trying to do. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a seismic change. I think, you know, you're, you're going to see, um, you, you know, Valeri's coming off of, you know, what's, what's likely an MVP season. Diego Char, in many ways, had his best season he's ever had uh, with the Portland Timbers. He, people didn't talk about him as much, but, you know, up until the... The, the foot break um, in, in, in Houston, um, he, was, he was just awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th those guys, while they're getting up there in years, are still going to be playing at a high level next year. We've still got a, you know, a, a pretty good window with our basic core group, including um, Nagby and, 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 and several others, to do some damage. I expect Blanco to come back in now that he's adjusted and have a more impactful um, season than he had uh, last year. So. Um, but there, there are definitely some areas where, where, where we can add, where we can get younger, um, where we can add a starter um, or two, and, uh, and, and, and so that process is, is, is begun, and I think it's going to be, um, you know, the question is, is, do you make the changes all this offseason, or do you maybe leave a little more powder for the summer as well, um, you know, which is a window where you've got you know more options typically so we've got to figure out what changes we make now there will be some changes but also what changes you know uh that that, that maybe we we leave for uh this summer as well I want to kind of transition over to a broad look at, at the organization and certainly the most noticeable thing is, is the expansion to Providence Park. It's already started there's already activity that we've seen on the corner of 18th and Morrison. Uh, what should fans what should residents of Portland to expect over the next few months uh, and two years ultimately as, as the project gets completed yeah I mean I guess one of the the silver linings to to our end of the season was we get to start you know some of the work earlier we'd actually budgeted you know I'm, I'm an optimist I thought Red Bulls had a chance of beating Toronto so I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking we've got and they actually second leg they, yeah. they, they came pretty darn close but um, we were thinking in terms of actually hosting MLS Cup and, and starting after then. But, uh, you know, a lot of the work, we will be shutting down um, the, uh, you know, the east side along 18th there, um, by and large. But a lot of the work that's going to happen this off season is foundational, below grade kind of stuff. It's going to be less visible. I mean, people will probably see some equipment and some cranes. Um, we're going to have a lot of equipment on our field. We'll be putting in a new field going into next season. We'll also be putting in a new field um, going into the 2019 season. It's a rare time where we're going to be getting away from our two-year cycle, which is a, already one of the shorter cycles for artificial uh, turf. But uh, I'm, I'm excited about the, the project and the expansion. Uh, we're also going to be starting uh, a, a pretty massive renovation of our training center, uh, our player training center. And, that's something we haven't talked about uh, as much, but uh, I think that you see the trend around the league right now. Uh, you know, when we opened up our training center, it was one of the better facilities in the league. Right now, uh, you know, it's 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 it needs some some upgrades, and so you know we've got to be adding offices. We're going to be adding a much bigger uh, kitchen um, uh, and, and dining facility for the players. Um, we'll be. Uh, adding a much much bigger gym, um, all kinds of new equipment. Um, we'll be we'll be uh, putting in a viewing theater, uh, video room uh, for for players, uh, larger rec spaces, um, uh, probably some new locker rooms, and we may be adding um, some some field resources as well on the outside. So uh, we're going to do a pretty hefty overhaul um, out there, which. You know, while fans don't see that, that's where a lot of staff and, 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 and players really, that's their day-to-day -day 
life and and you look at what Atlanta is doing and you know a lot of other teams with their with their training facilities it's 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 pretty I think uh, it, it's impressive but it's it's raising the bar across the league of kind of what's expected and we got to keep pace there developing the, the training ground developing the stadium developing T2 as well with USL we're seeing different approaches from clubs what's the way forward for T2 into 2018 and onwards well I mean short term we, we got to ask some questions on T2. We had a pretty rough season. Uh, yeah, that might be an understatement. Um, we, we, we also had a bunch of the players who would have been contributing to that team um, in a really meaningful way called up to the first team because of our injuries. And so just by virtue of that fact, T2 served a purpose. And that didn't help the, the, the team's performance week in and week out. And so they were a little bit hamstrung. Um, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> um, but but you know we also need to look at business-wise what's the right approach, um, and I'm not sure that it's sustainable for us to continue to to, to operate the team totally autonomously at the stadium. Um, you know we're looking at partnerships similar to what Seattle's done with Tacoma. Um, we could do that locally. We might even go out of state. So next year. T2 will operate in Providence Park like it did this year. Uh, long term, you know, it's certainly going to be a big part of our development period uh, uh, pyramid. Uh, USL will be a part of that, uh, and no question about it. But I, I think that that we'll have to look at the right um, strategy and alignment, uh, you know, for how that team exists and where it exists long term. That process has started right now. Quickly, I want to talk to you broadly about. Major League Soccer and uh, domestic uh, soccer in America. It seems like a big year for it with VAR coming in, with Atlanta coming in, and, and what they've done to the landscape. I How was you... wrong on Atlanta. Were you? I'm not, I'm not always right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 was, I, I thought that was a tough market. You yeah. know, I, I really did. In an NFL stadium, yeah. um, I, I don't think anybody uh, had the foresight to see just how successful it would be. Certainly, they had a really smart um, technical strategy you know, and, and capital intensive as well, but bringing in the young talent they did. I mean, I think Almiron, you know, forgetting about Martinez, who's a great guy, Almiron's, to me, if I'm not watching some of the guys on our team, he's, he's, he's yeah. the player, not just young player, he's yeah. the player in the league I'm most interested in watching. So um, kudos to them yeah. and, and what they've done. But sorry, I interrupted. Is that, was that the, you know, what's the model forward for MLS? Are there going to be more Atlantis coming in? I mean, where do you see this league going in five, ten years? Well, look, I mean, public, we've got, we know we've got LAFC coming in next year. We, 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 we all expect Miami to be coming in. Yeah. That's, it's been a, a, a saga, certainly. Um, but, uh, you know, Certainly expansion is going to get to 28 eight teams. I think that's at least, I'm not differing from anything that's out there publicly. Uh, Nashville had a big success the other day with, with what they've done. I know there's great things going on in Cincinnati. Sacramento is going to be successful um, when they're eventually an MLS team. Uh, so, you know, and then the question is what's the right hard cap on a number of franchises? But, you know, the, the league's getting better every year that's a good thing for soccer in this country that's a good thing for the national team uh, you know having a good quality domestic league uh, is, 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 is good for the American soccer player and you know that that can mean having more international top quality players to raise the level as well but but and you, you, you got to understand you know how the, the league works with the federation but but MLS is making this whole region better and it's certainly you know despite um, you know what what's happened with World Cup. I, I MLS's growth and uh, you know all the things that it's doing on the field is a very positive thing for soccer in the United States and the American player.